But when you first sign up with Text Broker, you need to demonstrate that you know a little bit of HTML. Now, you don't need to be a programmer or a developer, but it does help to know some of the basics. Well, I'm Michael with the Rider Sanctuary, and today we're going to go over the six most common HTML elements in Text Broker Editor. Now before we get started, if you can hit the like button, that would help the channel out. And for more videos like this, you can always hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always hit me up on social media, on Twitter or Facebook, or use the contact form on ridersanctuary.com's website. Okay, Textbooker HTML. We're going to cover the most basic forms of it, and we're only going to be covering the six most common things that you'll find. Now, a lot of these are in the Textbooker editor itself, but I find that writing them out while I'm going is far more beneficial. So today we're going to be using the WordPress editor, and that's only because it's the easiest for me to show you how to do all this stuff. Now the first thing we're going to cover are headers and subheadings. These are the most bold pieces of content that you'll find on most blog posts. A header is kind of like telling you the content that's below it. So if your blog post was a book, the subheadings and headers would be the chapters. But there's a bit of a hierarchy to it. So like H1 is always reserved for the title. And in Text Broker, the headline that's on the top of the editor is the H1. So you'll probably never write out the H1 tag for the primary title unless the client wants you to do that in the piece itself. Now I've come across a couple that would actually request this. So if you need to, what you do is put in H1, then the title, this is the title, and then you close the H1. So what that does is that tells web browsers that the H1 is the title, and then you have your title, and then you close the HTML. So you have to have H1 and then slash H1. Now in the hierarchy of headers, the next one that would come next is the H2. Now these are the most common forms of headers you'll use in Text Broker. These are what break up all the content. So like if we were doing a blog post, say, about uh, using WordPress, we would create an H2. Oops and say that we'll break it down by using plugins in WordPress. And then we would have another one. Um, we'll just say using themes. Oops. Themes in WordPress. Oh, seriously? I don't want to, yeah. That's what happens when your fingers click on buttons they shouldn't. So as you can see, the H2s are saying are highlighting points of the article that pe that will bring people's attention. So like that piece of content will say using plugins in WordPress will be all about using plugins in WordPress. Same with the themes. Now H3s are sub points to the H2. So like if we were to do using plugins with WordPress, say that we want to highlight some of the most prominent ones. Ah, there we go. And we want to say Yoast SEO. So what that is doing is saying that this point here is relevant to this point here. It has nothing to do with the one below it. The H3 is reflecting the H2, and the H2 is reflecting the H1. You see the hierarchy there going on. So like say if we wanted to do another one, um, we'll say one for, let's put in word fence, because I like word fence. So now we're, that content below the H3 would be all about WordFence and using it as a plugin for WordPress. And then finally, we're gonna say H4s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna put an H4. And this is gonna be supporting Yoast SEO. So we'd maybe highlight some benefits to it. So, readability checker. So now the H4 right here is all about the Yoast SEO plugin which is then about the plugins in WordPress. You know, you see how it all falls together. Now you don't have to indent these like I did. I only did that to demonstrate how the, H, um, the header tags are in a hierarchy. So in reality, you'll probably just write them all like this, where it's all one line after another. I usually like to put in spaces when I'm writing content only so that I know what each point is about. So that just keeps it more um, organized for myself when I'm creating the content. Now, like I said, you don't have to do it that way, but for me, it's easier. So that's how headings and subheadings work. Now, what we're going to do is how do lists work? Because you have two different types of lists in Text Broker. You got bullet lists and numbered lists. And technically, it's like that on every website. So let's say that we want to create an unordered list. Now, these are bullet point lists that you'll see on most websites. 
So you go UL, which stands for unordered list, and then we'd close it. I only do it this way so that I can keep track of all the different things that go inside it. So like now we're gonna list item, which is LI. I put in the open and close just so I don't forget. It's habit, I've been doing it for two, more than two decades. That way, when it comes down to coding and uh, if you don't get into the habit of opening and closing, like if I was to delete that, let's say this one right here, it would screw up the list something like beers. So I always got into the habit of opening and closing my HTML. So the list item, let's say we're gonna make a bolt list and we're gonna use, eh, we're just gonna name color. So we got red, we're gonna say blue, and we're gonna say white. So now what that looks like is you got your unordered list and your list here. And when you go to visual editor or when anybody looks at it on a website, it's gonna look like that. So I have my bullets here and the bullets will look a little bit different depending on the theme you're using in WordPress, but um, for the most part, it's all bullet list. So we go back to the text editor. Oh, you can see that I screwed something up somewhere. This is why I tell you to uh, make sure you got your code right because Something got messed up. I wonder if I had an extra list item somewhere. Anyway, so now if we go back, that's what it looks like. And the code's clean. So always make sure you got your coding in right because then it'll screw things up. So that's an unordered list. But what about numbered list? Now numbered list, you'd want OL for ordered list. And what that does, that changes the format of the bullet list to be numbers. It's really not all that difficult. If you remember that UL is unordered list and OL is ordered list, and ordered list is numbers, unordered is bullet list. Okay, so what about bold? Now there's two ways you can use bold, and technically both of them are correct. So if we wanted to say, we'll use strong, because that is the most, whoops, common way to bold text in HTML nowadays is using the strong command. So we can say, this is all bold text, but this isn't. Okay. You know, I don't normally have this much of a problem typing unless I'm doing a video. So now when we look at it, you got your visual. This is all bold text, but this isn't. The strong command tells the browser to put it all in bold. And that is probably the best way to go about doing it. You can also use B for bold. Now this is from back in the day, original um, HTML. And uh, it's what I was using for like the longest time. And it didn't get integrated into my head until recently to use strong instead. So, but if you use B, it'll do the same thing. But if you go back to the text order, there you go. I can use B, but I would recommend using strong simply because that you don't want text broker editors to come down on you for using their improper HTML, even though both technically work but strong is the more acceptable. Okay, so what about italicizing? Italicizing is another one of those that um, changed a little bit over the years. Italicize text. So originally you could use I for italicize and it would look like that. But the nowadays the more common um, programming type is EM. So you change both of those, does the same thing. It italicizes, italicizes the text within the coding. For future reference, the EM stands for emphasize. So if you wanted to emphasize text, you'd use EM. Okay, so now we got a fun one. What about hyperlinks? Now hyperlinks are going to be another one of the more common things you come across in text broker, especially if you want to cite your work. If you want to put in stats on anything, you definitely have to link to wherever you pulled the stat from for proof of, well, your writing. You always want to cite your work. And some clients will want you to link certain products or link to a certain page or create some, like, some kind of link to, well, for the content. So for this one, we're going to put, this is WordersSanctuary.com's, oops, YouTube channel. Oh my God. <laughs> 
I'm really not this bad. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a link at a YouTube channel. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna open it up with the carrot, go a her f equals quotes, and then we're gonna grab the link for the YouTube channel, and put that in, we're gonna end the quote, do a close carrot, and then this one's gonna be slash a. So what that does is that tells the browsers that YouTube channel, wow, how about if I fix that out? Boom. That YouTube channel is a link going to this website right here, which is the channel's YouTube uh, link URL. And then they close it with the A. So A her F is always going to be a link. And when you go look at the visual, you'll see that this is writersanctuary.com's YouTube channel that's in a link. And the link would go to my channel. Now, what if you wanted the link to open up in a new browser window? Now, a lot of clients will ask for this fairly easy to do. You just go into the link right after the quote and tell it target or equals and then quotes underscore kind of hard to look over the microphone blank unquote. Oh, quote. So what that tells the browser is that the target that they're linking to is going to open up in a blank window. So if we were to click on this, it open up a new browser window. Now a lot of people like doing that simply because it leaves the original page open, which improves on page time. And when somebody is done reading the content from the link, they can close that browser window and go back to reading what they were just reading on the website. Of course, you don't want the extra slash A there. Okay, and then the last thing is using the underline. Now underlines, you probably won't use that often simply because it looks too much like a hyperlink on a website and a lot of people stopped using the underlines but if you want to pretty easy that's just you for underline and this will say this is underlined text now unfortunately you see that looks like a link the only difference is that when i hover over it it doesn't change colors like most links do but it still gives the misimpression that it does so that's why you probably won't use a lot of them but it probably doesn't hurt to know that simply because it is part of the text broker editor. So there you have it. That is six of the most common HTML elements in text broker. And I did dive a bit deeper into what each of these does. And I leave a link to the blog post in the description down below. And if you would like to learn more about HTML and some of the easy things you can do, you can always head up through W3 schools and I'll put a link in the description below for that as well. And it's a really good free system to learn everything about HTML, CSS, PHP. I mean, it has a ton of different things you can learn. Now you don't have to, but it does, uh, it does open up quite a few doors. Like you can change the text of certain things. Um, you can change the colors, font sizes, you can do, uh, subscript. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do in HTML. Now you probably don't need to go all fancy with it with a text broker customer, but there might be a few times where adding a little bit more pizzazz and panache might be kind of beneficial. Now the text broker editor has a lot of this stuff already built in, like adding links and doing bullet lists and underlines and bolds. Um, I just find it far more easier to hard code it myself. That way I know it, it's going to come out exactly how I want it to. Now, I had a problem in the past trying to use Text Broker's um, bullet list creator, and it was just all kinds of wonky. It just didn't feel right. Things kept getting all screwed up in code, so I just said, hell with it, I'll just do it myself. And that's only because I am much faster doing it that way. But what if you wanted to use the Text Broker Visual Editor to make these changes for you? That's actually fairly simple. Like if we went to the Visual Editor and we say that we wanted to make this is a heading, but we wanted this to be H2. We would simply highlight the piece, go up to where it says paragraph, drop that up and pick which one we want. And we'll say we want it as head heading two. So now we have a heading two, we hit enter, and then we can go back to typing normal. Same thing with a bullet list. Like if we wanted to do a bullet, a bullet list, we can hit that button there. We'll say red, white, blue, doubles tap and it takes away the list fun thing with wordpress though is that you can actually hit the down arrow and choose circle disc or squares for your bullet list and same with the numbers you can do lower alphabet greek roman of upper alpha upper roman you can get all kinds of fancy with it but we're not going to so we're just going to create a numbered list we'll say red whoops white blue and let's say that we wanted some of this text in bold so we're gonna bold this here, oops, in bold. 
And then some of this in italics. We're going to italicize this in italicize, so that. What if we want a link to here? So if we wanted to do this, we can highlight want a link. We can hit the link option here. Then we can paste in whatever we wanted. So we'll just say HTTPS YouTube.com. Then we hit submit or apply and voila. What if we wanted to open up in a new window? We can hit the edit button. Hit the gear here for link options. Open in a new tab. Update. Now that link will open up a new tab. And we can add our underlines. But I don't have underlines on my editor for tech, for uh, WordPress because I use this to write my blog posts and I never use underlines. But if you have the tiny MC advanced plugin installed, you can edit any of the uh, bar up here for your word processor. But now that we have this, what about the coding version so that we can paste it into text broker? Well, if we hit the text tab, and now we have all the HTML coding that went into it. So you have the H2, you have the ULs, the OLs, you got your strong, your, your italicized text, and then the link itself. Now WordPress adds the no opener coding to it. You don't really need it for um, clients and text broker, but if you don't want to add it, you just delete that part of it. So now all I'd have to do is just highlight this entire thing, copy and paste it into the text broker. So you can see it's pretty beneficial to write everything out in WordPress like I do. I mean, you can do it same thing with uh, if you use Word, but I found that pasting Word documents into text broker is kind of, uh, well, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Now, text broker editor does have a Word import ability, and that might be quite helpful, but it depends on how you have everything set up. So you still might have to change the code a little bit in the text broker editor to make it look right. At least with WordPress, all I have to do is copy and paste it. Okay, so there you have it. It's pretty slick, pretty easy. Not doesn't take a lot of thought to it. Um, I would suggest writing it down in a notebook or keeping an, an open page somewhere to, to remind you. Like you can put all that stuff in a notepad, just leave it open on a page so that you know, get the idea of putting in HTML for text broker. So how often have you ever used HTML in anything you've done online? Leave in the comments down below. Like I said, I've been developing websites since 1998, and I remember back in the day when I first started learning. This was before hot linking, hot linking images was such a bad thing. We used to steal images from other people's websites and import them onto our Angel Fire site. Yeah, people for kind of frown on that nowadays, so don't do that. But it was pretty fun. I had that website up for, a, in fact, it's still up, but there's like nothing on it. If you found the video informative, hit the like button. For more videos about text broker, freelance writing, WordPress, or anything else I cover, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you tonight during the live stream.